It's been about eight years now since I started my credit card journey, and the other day I just got approved for my 20th card, so I figured that right now would be sort of the perfect time to walk through my entire roadmap of things like what credit cards I have, when I open them, and the sign-up bonuses that I got, which have now added up to over 1 million points. Now, credit card number one for me was just a basic Wells Fargo student card that I opened on July 28th, 2016, which was the summer going into my junior year of college. Surprisingly enough, at that time, I really was just using a debit card for everything because honestly, I didn't see the point in using credit cards if I already had the cash inside my bank account to pay for stuff. So funny enough, my mom actually got me to apply for that card because she made a good point that I could just put some textbooks and groceries on that credit card and then just pay it off immediately to at least start building credit for after college. So I got that Wells Fargo student card, but I really wasn't trying to earn any rewards or really optimize my spending back then. Now I got a really low credit limit of maybe like 500 bucks to start off, which is pretty normal. And then the card only got 1% cash back on everything plus no signup bonus, but it had no annual fee as well, which I honestly view as the most important thing for anyone out there who's looking for the first credit card because now I've just been able to keep this one account open since the very beginning. And then that just helps with the age of credit factor and my credit score. And it's costing me $0 to do that. Also, the student card was eventually product changed to the Wells Fargo Active Cash after I graduated, so now I'm getting 2% cash back anytime I do use it. But again, honestly, the main purpose of this card today is just to act as sort of my oldest credit account to really help my credit score. Then I use it maybe once or twice per year just to keep it active. Now I graduated from college in May of 2018 and pretty much immediately started working my first full-time job. So once I got settled in and really started earning money for my salary, I decided that it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and get another credit card to continue building my credit while also maybe earning some better rewards at the same time in the process. I did a bit of research and I learned that Chase credit cards were probably gonna be the best place for me to go next because I had well over one year of good credit history at this point, which tends to really help with approval odds on those Chase cards. Plus, I learned about something out there called the Chase Trifecta Setup that I could work towards, which would basically allow me to earn points across several different Chase cards that I could then redeem for travel at some point in the future. So for my second credit card, I got the no annual fee Chase Freedom card, which is actually no longer available to new applications because Chase later replaced this with the Freedom Flex. But I got approved for that OG Freedom card on December 9th, 2018. For this, I got a sign-up bonus of 15,000 Chase UR points. And then the really cool part here on top of that was that I could get 5% cash back or really 5X Chase points per dollar in rotating quarterly categories. And then, like I said, my goal was to eventually complete a Chase Trifecta setup by getting the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Freedom Unlimited cards next. Now, throughout 2019, I really waited to get any other credit cards because honestly, I was just more focused on getting a good budget in place to save as much money as possible at first because that's gonna be way more important really early on in anyone's financial journey. So really what I'd recommend is getting an emergency fund of at least a few months worth of cash or at least some sort of cash safety net in place first before anyone does the whole credit card game. That way you're gonna help to decrease the chances of ever falling into credit card debt, which was the one thing I definitely wanted to avoid. But then by the end of 2019, I felt comfortable with where I was at financially. So I knew it was probably time to go ahead and start expanding my credit card strategy. So the next credit card that I got was the Chase Sapphire Preferred that I opened up on November 19th of 2019 for the second card in my Chase Trifecta. Now the Sapphire Preferred was my first premium travel credit card because it has a $95 annual fee that actually kind of made me a little bit hesitant at first, but after doing some more research, I started to see that, okay, I was getting at least a 60,000 point signup bonus here, which was gonna be worth at least $750 towards travel at a minimum. And I found out that if I decided I did not like the card after one year, then I could always just downgrade it to another no annual fee Chase Freedom card. To me, that meant that I was not locked into paying that $95 annual fee every year. So that larger signup bonus was almost like this risk-free value. And because of that, I really think that going with a card like the Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Trifecta is just gonna be a no-brainer for anyone out there who really just wants to get started in the whole credit card game. So that tends to be my recommendation whenever friends and family ask me about where they can begin. Now, a few months later, I decided that it was time to finish out that Chase Trifecta. So I applied for and got approved for the no annual fee Chase Freedom Unlimited card on January 7th, 2020. And that was gonna act as my catch-all card, earning 1.5X Chase points per dollar on everything. And then on top of that, I got a welcome offer of 20,000 points on this card as well. Typically, I like to recommend that people get a new credit card once every three to six months or so, depending on what they're really comfortable with. And usually I've been right around that range as I've added my cards to my wallet over the years. But occasionally what you'll see is that I do get cards a little bit quicker than that because here it was less than two months in between getting the Sapphire Preferred and this Freedom Unlimited card. Chase actually has a 230 rule where it's been talked about in the whole credit card world for a while now, but Typically what that says is they will not approve you for more than two Chase credit cards in a rolling 30 day period. But for me, I've never really pushed that rule because I think more of a patient and slow system of applying cards 
very slowly over time is just gonna be the better approach. So your mileage may vary here with how fast you wanna get new cards, but what you'll see throughout this video here is that for the most part, I do like to space things out so that way I don't get overwhelmed. Now at this point, I had my Chase Trifecta and I had earned 95,000 points from sign-up bonuses alone, plus whatever points I earned from the spending multipliers. But right around this time, the whole world just shut down with everything that went on in 2020. So travel came to a stop and I just decided I was gonna pause my credit card strategy as well. But by the end of 2020, I decided to pick it back up again. So on November 18th, 2020, I applied for and got approved for the Amex Gold Card. And that's because I really just wanted something that could act as my main food credit card since it earned 4X points per dollar on restaurants and US grocery spending. And earning points on groceries is just one of the biggest areas where the Chase Trifecta is clearly lacking. So to me, the Amex Gold Card made a lot of sense here. The Amex Gold does have a 250 annual fee, but I knew that I could get up to $240 back in credits every year for Uber and select dining partners like Grubhub that I was already spending money on anyway. Plus, I got a decent sign-up bonus as well for 60,000 Amex points, which was pretty good at the time, even though now in today's world, we've seen much higher offers on the gold card. Now, a few more months after I got the Amex gold, I wanted to go ahead and continue building out my Amex setup to go along with my Chase setup. So on February 15th of 2021, I got approved for the Amex Platinum card, which I'll admit I probably got a bit too early in my whole credit card journey, but I just wanted to start having access to the Amex lounge that was in my home airport in Philadelphia whenever I was traveling. And the thing that really sold me on this card here was the record high welcome offer at the time for 100,000 Amex points plus 10X back on restaurants and gas for six months. Even though again, now in today's world, we've been seeing a lot higher Amex Platinum offers. Also back then in early 2021, the annual fee was 550 on the Platinum card, which American Express increased later on that year to 695. But the card still gave me enough value from all its credits to justify paying the annual fee, which I talked about in another video that I'll link to down below. Now, as 2021 went on, I was really excited about what I was doing for credit cards and budgeting and all this other personal finance stuff. So I went ahead and started making videos right here on this YouTube channel, which turned into a real business as my side hustle that year. And because I had a business now, that meant I could get approved for business credit cards, which was a total game changer and opened up even more potential to earn more points and really just level up my whole credit card strategy. So on August 16th, 2021, I got approved for the Chase Inc. business cash card which has no annual fee and earned points in a few different business related categories. But more importantly to me, there was an offer of 75,000 Chase UR points, which was just a huge offer and allowed me to just continue adding more Chase points to my balance. So now at that time in August, 2021, I was seven credit cards into my journey, which dated back to 2016. And all those cards were spread out pretty nicely where the total points earned from signup bonuses alone was 170,000 Chase points plus 160,000 Amex points for a combined total of 330,000 points. So that's about a third of the way to 1 million, again, without considering any points I might have earned from other spending multipliers. Now, the cool thing is that you can actually look at my YouTube channel and go all the way back to this point in my journey, because it was really back in 2021 when I started just documenting everything here on this channel. And even though my YouTube studio has changed over the years, my plan has stayed consistent. My thoughts and my opinions have stayed consistent. And honestly, even the shirts that I wear here in these videos have all stayed very consistent. So that is gonna bring me to the sponsor for this portion of the video, which is Cuts Clothing. So I started wearing these Cuts shirts a few years ago because I could really never find shirts that fit well, were comfortable to wear, and had a clean minimalist look on them because I hate wearing stuff with logos and prints on them. So these Cuts shirts really just checked off all those boxes and now they're pretty much all I wear. Honestly, I probably have like 20 of these shirts laying around in my closet that I could just rotate through, but Cuts has a ton of variety, so I've been able to add that variety in my closet. So I've got t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, Henley shirts, and I've got them all in a bunch of different colors that are really nice as well because they're never flashy and they maintain that simple look that I'm always going for. Now, if you're looking to upgrade your wardrobe to Cuts clothing with shirts like this one, which is the AO long sleeve curve hem in the black color, you can head over to Cuts with the link that I'll have down below in the description, where you can also get 20% off your order if you use the code Daniel Braun at checkout. Plus there's free US shipping and returns on orders of $150 and above. So go ahead and check that out again with the link down below. And thank you again to Cuts for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, now moving on to credit card number eight that I got next on October 29th, 2021, which was the Chase Freedom Flex. And that was the card that I mentioned earlier that replaced the OG Chase Freedom card. So the Freedom Flex also has no annual fee and comes with that same feature of earning 5x back in rotating quarterly categories, along with a few other multipliers like 3x on dining and drugstores. Now, I didn't really need this card if we were just looking at those multipliers, but the reason I went ahead and got it was because I was under the Chase 524 rule at that time, 
And I also came across a really great sign up bonus of 20,000 chase points plus 5x back on groceries for my first year. So, because of that offer and how much I spent on groceries, I just couldn't pass that up. Now, with the Chase 524 rule, I've explained that in more detail in some other videos. But basically, what that rule says is that if you've opened five or more personal credit cards across all issuers within the past 24 months, you will automatically be denied for any new Chase credit cards. So big focus really early on for me was just optimizing the order that I got my cards to purposely take advantage of this rule and then get the best Chase cards while I was still eligible. So yes, Chase cards are pretty good and they do tend to have some of the best sign up bonuses out there, but people seem to think that I'm sort of just this Chase fanboy when I'm really not. Really was just the fact that I've been optimizing this whole time the order that I got my credit cards while factoring in this rule. Now, after getting the Freedom Flex, I was at 424 and I wanted to let things sort of just cool down for a little bit because there was a few other Chase credit cards that I wanted to get. So I decided to wait until June 8th of the following year to get my next credit card, which was another business card. And that was going to be the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited. The Inc. Unlimited also has no annual fee and it came with another massive 75K signup bonus as well. And this card was just going to be a good catch all card for miscellaneous business spending because it gets 1.5 X chase points per dollar on everything. Now, the beauty of getting all these chase business credit cards is that even though you generally do have to be under 524 in order to get approved, they don't actually count towards your 524 status. Once you get the card, because chase business cards don't report to your personal credit. So at that point, because I'd let things cool down for a while. And because that Inc unlimited card did not add to my 524 status. I was at 324 and I wanted to get two more Chase cards before moving on to some other issuers. So next on July 19th, 2022, I got the Chase Marriott Bonvoy Boundless because there's a limited time offer of five free nights with this card where each one of those nights was going to be valued at up to 50,000 Marriott points per night. Plus every year, this card also is going to get another separate free night award valued at up to 35,000 points. Now there is a $95 annual fee on the Bonvoy Boundless card, but I look at hotel cards like this as being sort of a keeper card because the free night award that we're getting every year should give me well above $95 in value that I'm paying. It's basically because Marriott is a chain that I stay at quite a bit along with Hyatt. I know that by paying that annual fee of $95 per year, I'm basically just prepaying for that free night award. That'll probably give me a night that's worth somewhere at least above $200 or more if that makes sense. So I got that card because the math just worked out as being a keeper card. And there was also that great limited time sign up bonus. But then with this next card here, I got it a couple of months later as another sort of keeper card that I plan to use for a really big upcoming purchase. So on September 13th, 2022, I got the Chase World of Hyatt card. Just like that Marriott card, the World of Hyatt card also has a $95 annual fee, but this comes with a free night award for any category one to four Hyatt, which is easily also gonna be worth a couple hundred dollars at a minimum. And then the sign up bonus for this card was 30,000 Hyatt points after spending $3,000 in three months. Plus I was gonna get two X bonus points on everything for six months and up to $15,000 of spending. And to me, this was gonna be a very good option here because I wanted to use this to buy my girlfriend at the time and now my fiance's engagement ring. So those two cards brought me up to 524 and I was okay with being there at that point. So next I wanted to go ahead and add some cards from other issuers to basically fill out my core credit card setup so that I could get some better value from other spending categories where I wasn't really optimized yet. And over the next few months, I added three more cards because of this. On September 20th, 22nd, I went ahead and got the Amex Blue Business Plus, which has no annual fee and gets 2x Amex points per dollar on everything, which just gave me another option for a catch all card on my business spending. But this card is honestly just pretty average because there's not really much else to it. And the sign up bonus I got was only for 15,000 points, which is also pretty bad for a business card. I sort of got that to round out the Amex trifecta along with the platinum and gold cards. And not every credit card you get is really going to work out as good as you think it will. So yeah, Blue Business Plus was fine, but again, just just really average. Next on October 17th, I got the city custom cash card, which pretty much has never left my wallet ever since I got it because it's one of the best no annual fee cards hands down that you can get right now in my opinion. So it gets 5x points per dollar in your highest spend category every single billing cycle where I only use it for gas spending to lock in and getting that 5x back. Plus I got a 20,000 point sign up bonus with the city custom cash as well. The next day on October 18th, I got the Amex Amazon business prime card because I just had some decent upcoming business spend where I knew I was going to be buying some stuff straight from Amazon. So this card would get me 5% back on Amazon spending. And it also gave me a $100 Amazon gift card as well. There was also no annual fee on the business prime card because I was already an Amazon prime customer. And I also forgot to mention this, but for this card here and for that Amex blue business plus card as well, because I was already an American express customer with a few other cards that I'd had for the past few years, they did not do a hard credit pull for me. So 
Applying for those two Amex cards with no annual fees really did not affect how my overall credit profile looked in any way, and it also did not affect my strategy. Now, after those sort of rapid fire applications, I was now up to 14 credit cards going into 2023. And my point totals, again, from the signup bonuses alone were 265,000 chase points, 175,000 Amex points, 60,000 high points, and 20,000 city points, plus those five free night awards from Marriott, which I'm not even counting. So combined, that is 520,000 points, or about halfway to a million. Next, on January 2nd, 2023, I got the Built Master card, which has no sign-up bonus, but also no annual fee. And like many of you know, this card is still very powerful because it's getting one X built point per dollar on rent without any extra transaction fees that most other credit cards normally charge you when you pay rent with them. So there's not as much upfront point earning ability on the Built Master card, but from January, 2023 until today, I've been earning a lot of really valuable built points on my rent spending, which is my largest spending category every month. That spending was otherwise just going to waste before I got this card. So definitely a great pickup for my wallet and definitely also a must have card for any renter in my opinion. And you can learn more about the built MasterCard at the link that I'll have down below. We've also got some links to many other credit cards that we've talked about here in this video and a whole lot more. So as always, just go ahead, do your own research and make sure that any offers you find through those links are gonna be competitive. But using those links is gonna be the best way to support the free content here on this channel. So thank you in advance to anyone that does use those links. Now, at this point here, I decided there wasn't really any other personal credit cards that I had to have at that moment for the rest of 2023. And I was also at 524, so I wanted that number to just come down a bit so I could actually get my most recent card that I just got the other day that we'll cover in just a minute. So because I started to have more business spending and because most business credit cards don't count towards 524 status, I decided to start looking at some of those other cards for my next few cards that I was gonna get. So on June 1st, 2023, I got the Amex Business Gold card, which gave me a 100,000 point offer that fit very well into my overall business spend, hit the minimum spend requirement to earn those points. But unfortunately, in the time since I got that card, American Express just bumped up the annual fee on that from 295 to 375 and took away some key features and benefits that I liked. So later this year, when this card comes up for renewal, I'm probably gonna cancel it unless they give me some sort of a really good retention offer. After that, on August 11th, 2023, I got the City American Airlines business card, which waived the $95 annual fee in year one and also gave me a sign up bonus of 60,000 miles. And the main features that I really liked about this card was just the fact that it gave me a free check bag benefit and 25% sent off in flight Wi-Fi, which usually I buy whenever I'm trying to get work done as I'm flying. Next, I got the Chase Inc. Business Preferred card on November 27th of 2023, which gave me a 100,000 point offer that was huge. And this card does have a $95 annual fee, but it also comes with a lot of the same benefits as the Chase Sapphire Preferred card that I mentioned a lot earlier in this video, including one-to-one -one transfer partners. Now, the reason why this is very important to my strategy here is because by having this Inc. Preferred card, what I was able to do was keep access to these valuable transfer partners so that that any chase points I have, I could keep under this card and then downgrade my Sapphire Preferred card, which I got the sign-up bonus for way back in late 2019. And the reason why I wanted to downgrade my Sapphire Preferred card is because after 48 months have passed since my last Sapphire card bonus, as long as I do not currently have another Sapphire card, then I'm eligible to get another sign-up bonus for a new Sapphire card. This is called the Chase 48 month rule. So yeah, I know Chase has a whole bunch of rules that we've talked about here, but the way that Chase has a structure right now, I'm able to get, like I said, a second sign-up bonus on another Sapphire card, whereas some other issuers out there like American Express, they only allow you to get one sign-up bonus per card in your lifetime. So this is more of an advanced long-term part of my overall credit card strategy, but I did know about this rule way back when I started to plan this stuff out. So it is pretty cool that now all these years later, it is starting to work out. So I got the Ink Preferred card in November of 2023. And then a few months later, I downgraded my Sapphire Preferred to another OG Freedom card. And then recently I just got two new cards with credit card number 19 being one that I opened on March 4th of 2024, which is the Amex Business Platinum. Now, now this card does have a 695 annual fee and it comes with a few other features and benefits that can partially offset the cost of that fee a bit. But the main reason that I got this card at the time that I did is just because of the fact that I came across a targeted offer of 190,000 Amex points after spending $15,000 in three months. And that was actually perfect because I was in the process of making a huge update to this channel because I bought a new camera, new lighting, new microphone, and a whole bunch of other expensive stuff that you see right here that would kind of allow me to just earn all these points from a big sign up bonus if I planned it out right. To me, that's a big investment, but I also do wanna reinvest back into this channel to make the best videos possible that are the highest quality they can be. So 
in the media business that I run here, I do think it is money that was well spent, and I figured I might as well get a very good credit card signup bonus out of this big business investment. But that leads me to the most recent credit card that I got on April 17th of 2024, which is the Chase Sapphire Reserve card that had a signup bonus of 60,000 points. And this card does have a 550 annual fee with a $300 annual travel credit. But to me, this is very much worth getting because of the growing network of Chase Airport lounges that are launching in airports across the US over this year and next year. And that's going to include the Chase Lounge that's been confirmed here in Philly, which is supposed to be one of their largest at 20,000 square feet. Now, I know there were some recent changes to this card with its priority pass restaurant access being removed, which is obviously a negative to some people who really use that. But to me, that was more of just a bonus benefit that I'm sad to see go, but it's not really gonna affect the main reason why I am getting this card. I'll make a more detailed video about the Sapphire Reserve card at some point in the near future, just going over my thoughts. But with this signup bonus, my point totals from my signup bonuses comes out to be 425,000 chase points, 465,000 Amex points, 60,000 American Airlines miles, 60,000 high points, and 20,000 city thank you points for a grand total of 1,030,000 points miles, plus all those other spending multipliers and other unique signup bonuses like those five free Marriott nights, plus all the points that I'm not even counting here that Jackie has earned as well in our two player credit card setup and a whole lot more. So I actually talked about how we turned our 1 million plus points into over $40,000 worth of travel in this video over here that I highly recommend you go ahead and check out next. That's gonna go over our two player credit card strategy with even more tips and tricks. So definitely, again, go ahead and check that out. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.